6.30, left in the dark. What can I do? It's an act of nature. Strong storms tearing through Northeast Ohio, leaving hundreds of thousands without power this morning. It was very frightening because I've never seen anything this bad before. Trees uprooted and ripped from the ground, crashing down on cars. It's sort of irreplaceable. It's right-hand drive and, you know, it's just a, a real rarity and they're so darn cute. And homes. I was actually upstairs looking out the window and it just fell on the house and my car. <laughs> but many are thankful this morning that it wasn't worse. Blessed, definitely blessed, because it could have been a lot worse. How are you holding up? I'm done. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is, this is God. I'm still here. That is the theme this morning. Uh, people thankful despite what has happened this morning. The number of people still without power is staggering. Yeah, small miracles all across Northeast Ohio yesterday for sure. According to First Energy's website, more than 331,000 customers across the state waking up in the dark this morning. Now here's a closer look at the impact right here in Northeast Ohio. The worst area right now, Cuyahoga County, with more than 200,000 First Energy customers without electricity. Lake County has more than 50,000 customers waking up in the dark. Geauga County has more than 24,000. Lorraine, roughly the same number there, 24,000 customers without power. So we have our crews spread all, all across Northeast Ohio showing you the worst hit areas. But first, we want to check in with meteorologist Trent McGill. And Trent, you were here last night watching these storms as they tour through Northeast Ohio. I know that I was watching you. So many people were and very thankful uh, for the advice that you gave, keeping us informed. Right, and that's the whole point. I mean, once these storms roll in, there's not a whole lot you can do other than keep yourself safe. You can't stop it from breaking down trees. You can't stop these storms from coming on shore, but you can, you can kind of make a plan to keep you and your loved ones, your friends and family safe. And that's why we, honestly, why we, we broke in. I mean, check this out. Here's our radar. This is from 3.20 yesterday afternoon. Told you yesterday morning between 2 and 6 o'clock we're going to be in on prime time for these thunderstorms to be rolling through here and they could be spinning. They could be tornadic, right? So at about 3 o'clock, Phil and I were in the weather center. We're watching this coming across the lake. And so at about 315, 320, we broke in and we said this is taking shape. This is developing. This is happening. We're going to let you know as soon as it gets a little bit closer and then we'll be with it, right? So give it a few more minutes. And then that's when we started seeing a little bit of a what we call like an inflow notch on this line. That's just offshore. So the National Weather Service issued warnings as this was making its way on shore. And we were on it. We were on the air letting you know about this storm. This is what we were watching. Something like this, like a little notch that'll pull in there and you can see the outflow right down here. That's rotation. That's what we're talking about as it rolls through. That's only one that rolled through Avon uh, all the way through Cuyahoga County, like it left Lorraine County through Cuyahoga County and faded away in Northern Summit County. Meanwhile, there was another one once you get up on the east side of Cleveland, and that was doing almost the exact same thing. I'll rewind a little bit. You see that inflow. We had 80 mile per hour winds at Burke and then it made its way on shore. So we're tracking this all out yesterday in the aftermath. Well, check it out. Mike Holden, he's out live this morning in Avon Lake, and you've got a tree that just sliced mm -hmm. the front half of this house off. Oh, it's insane seeing this in person, and now that it's a little lighter out, we have neighbors walking their dogs and snapping photos of the aftermath. But photojournalist Dave Krasko was able to provide new perspective in the sense that he looked at this and he said, Mike, do you see this thing? It is 80 feet tall, and it's a double trunk. So initially we thought maybe this is like two different trees. No, this is one mammoth tree uprooted, stretched all the way across the front of this home. The power of this storm is surreal because you have to consider not only did it come crashing down, but it sliced the front portion of this home in half. We are now wide open and exposed. The winds are kicking up quite a bit out here, which initially we said it was a bit concerning because we were surrounded by several just giant trees out here. And as Dave shows you panning upward, the these things have got to be like 100, 120 feet tall, and there are probably 10 right here in this front yard. When you consider how many there are, it is a miracle that this storm did not take down multiple. However, it did take down this one, and this is what folks are dealing with this in community. Now, as we zoom up to the top floor of this home, that second story, you can see that teal colored back wall, and I keep talking about that because it shows a bedroom that is open to the elements. All of the insulation is hanging, dangling mid 
midair. You can see some of those tiles as well as some of that insulation blowing sideways. Over to the left right here, that is a closet with each article of clothing perfectly folded, still resting on the hangers. And then there is that bedroom window that has accordion, the glass shattered. Beneath that point, we're not getting any closer because police have put this caution tape in front of the home. There is a car inside of this garage. And I know you're probably asking the next question, well, is everybody okay? Thankfully, and what neighbors are calling a true miracle, the homeowner was not here at the time of this incident. They are said to be okay, but we will continue to monitor this situation. The other big takeaway from being in this neighborhood, luckily and somehow they do have power out here. But we have to point out to everybody hitting the roads this morning, watch out for debris in the area. It is everywhere, including nails from homes just like this, as well as tree branches and tree limbs. Put down the phone, focus on the road. Right now, I want to send it over, though, to my colleague, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Van Mietri. She joins us with a bird's eye view from Air Tracker 5. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, it's kind of amazing to get a new perspective of something that we were seeing. Just the devastation on the ground this morning. I was walking you through people's items, things in there that they kept in a garage. And now we're seeing above and you can just see just how much damage happened at this apartment complex here in Parma Heights. I'm going to bring you in here and walk you through. Now, if you can imagine, this was once a garage. A lot of people use this garage to store different items. Now, the garage is here. If we head over about 15 feet, this right here is the roof of that garage. Now laying on top of cars, now laying in a lawn. You can see just how close it is to that apartment. It's one of those more, it's more of those stories that we're seeing of just how lucky people are. No injuries happened here. And for the most part, the apartment building itself is in good condition. We can see over here that there was a little bit of roof damage here, that roof right here in the front lawn. But for the most part, everyone is okay. And now it's just picking up the pieces of just how much damage was done in this area. And really throughout the area, we were driving through this area this morning, we saw many trees down. And th this morning, the people are waking up in Parma Heights without power. There were tons of lights, stoplights out. A good reminder that we keep telling people is remember those become a four way stop when they're blinking or they're not working. And also keep that in mind if this area is part of your morning commute. Also keep in mind just how much rubble will be on the road, just how much debris will be on the road. When we were taking a closer look, we could see just nails sticking out of different areas here. Now, I wanted, we did speak to a woman who shared with us exactly what she saw when, or, and what she heard as this whole storm was moving through. It sounded like the roof caving in and things banging into it. Um, and then when we felt that it was clear enough and quiet enough, we came out and looked out my sliders and within feet, we had the roof. Yeah, that feet was, you could just see how close that roof is to her back door. That really, that corner area right there is touching it. Now this morning we are following through, taking a look and assessing the damage. And just remember to be safe as you hit the roads this morning because there's still a lot on the roads. It's really incredible to see that damage from up above, to see that bird's eye view. We appreciate it, Elizabeth. Good thing no one was hurt, too. That's the miracle in all yeah. this, right? Across all of Northeast Ohio, everyone is safe. Now, we received a ton of video and images from you, our viewers, showing us what it looked like in your neighborhood. Uh, this is Bay Village. You see giant trees just toppled over, covering sidewalks and people's yards. And then check this out. A family's trampoline ruined. This is from a viewer in Brexville. And if you have pictures from your neighborhood, your house, and it's safe to do so, snap them, take some video. You can send it to weatherpix at wews.com. Please let us know the location of the damage in your email as well.